Okay, so they're giving us a couple of functions again, f of x, which is x squared plus x minus six, g of x, which is just x plus three, and they want us to divide the functions. That should be pretty easy, right? It's just f over g. Let's just divide. That just means f divided by g, so that's pretty nice, just f, which is x squared plus x minus six over g. g is just x plus three. Okay, so that's easy. So now, now they're asking us about the domain. Oh, hold on. One, one thing, I should check to see if this can be simplified. And in fact, it can. Do you see that the top actually factors? I know factoring is usually not people's favorite thing. Many, 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 many students have told me how much they despise factoring. My own children have told me how much they despise factoring when they were taking these kinds of classes. So I know, I know it's tough. Let me help. So I'm glad to go slow and be helpful, give you the reminders. Whenever you're factoring with the two parentheses thing, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative six. They multiply to be the back number and they add to be the middle number. What number is in the middle there? Well, it's a plus one. If there's no other number, it means, you know, just X alone means one X, right? It's not two X or three X, it's one X when it's X alone. So um, what are we gonna do on this? What, what are two numbers, two numbers that, two numbers that multiply to equal negative six? Well, two times three, and yet they have to add to equal plus one. So it's a plus three and a negative two. Is it negative two and plus three? Those numbers will multiply to be negative six. And when you add them, you'll get plus one, right? Everybody tracking with me? You see that? So the two numbers multiply to be negative six, right? Negative two and positive three multiply to be negative six. And when you add them, they make plus one, right? They multiply to be negative six, add to be plus one. So those are your two numbers, negative two and positive three. Now, why is that a big deal? Because now these cancel, don't they? You see that? See how those just cancel right out? All right, so now, Having done that, let me get rid of this stuff. That's just going to equal x minus 2. So that's the answer here is x minus 2, because that function really simplifies, right? When we factor the top, then we can cancel, and it really simplifies. But now, what about the second part of the question, the domain? Well, I don't know if you remember from the notes. Let me go grab the notes real quick. Um, from the homework 3A, the exam one notes. There they are. Remember the domain stuff? Where is it? There it is, finding the domain of a function. So let me put that in here for us. So there it is. Okay, so finding the domain of a function. What do you do? Denominator not equal to zero and solve for x. So we got to go back here. And you, now you might say, wait, Mr. Arm, but there, you know, there, it, it canceled. It's just x minus two. There's no more denominator. Yeah, I know in the end there's not. But really, even if there is a denominator for a minute, like there was there at first, you have to consider that as part of the issue. I know that seems weird. I know you might think, well, it's gone. It, well, not really, it was really there. It really, f over g means this f over that g. I know we can simplify it. We can make it look simpler, is what simplify means, but really that g is actually in the denominator. So for the domain, I have to consider that. So for the domain, remember domain is x's that are allowable. What are you allowed to do? Well, denominators, cannot equal zero. That's what I'm saying you do here, right? For domain, denominator is not zero. And then inside of a square root, well, we don't have any roots, do we? There's no, there's no square roots in this problem. 
So all we've got to deal with is denominator not equal to zero. Let's do it. What's the denominator? X plus three. Not equal to zero. Finish solving for that. Subtract three from both sides. X not equal to negative three. That's what needs to go here. X not equal to negative three. X is not allowed to be negative three. Why not? Because if you put in negative three there for X, do you see what it's going to do to that denominator? Negative three plus three, it's going to make that denominator zero. And dividing by zero is infinity, right? You can't take, you know, to divide anything by zero, zero goes into the, remember a, a fraction means divide, right? 10 divided by two, a fraction is division. Like, like, for example, 10 divided by 2 is 5, which you all know. Why? Because 2 goes into 10 five times, of course, right? A fraction means divide. It means how many times the bottom number goes into the top. Well, you see why you can't have 0 in the bottom? How many times does the bottom number go into the top in that case? How many times does 0 go into 7? Forever. 0 can go into 7 forever and not fill it up. Infinity. That's why we say does not exist, DNE. Meaning, meaning a, a, a normal number answer doesn't exist. It's just infinity. So you can't have zero in the bottom of a fraction. It's infinity. And so any X value that you would plug in that would make the bottom of a fraction zero is not allowed. It's not in the domain. It's not acceptable. So you can't put in, you can't let X be negative three because if you plug that into the denominator, it would make the denominator zero and the fraction thus infinity. Can't have that. So the domain is Everything except x cannot equal negative 3. x is not allowed to be negative 3. And over here, remember, we simplified. We factored the top, cross canceled, and, and the function was just x minus 2. So there we go.